So the first step is going to be as I take him sideways, he bases. Now I'm going to slide down, grab his wrist, pull it into me, and then push it into his stomach. And then from here, the sweep is so easy. He feels helpless. You elevate him and end up in the three quarter mile again. Here. I want, I want you guys to alternate. Sometimes you get to suck up his arm, here. Butterfly gets stuck on the inside of his thigh. One regular, and then one he bases. Got it? Same thing, that's the stick shift. Grab that wrist, pull it. Sometimes you gotta jam it. But you're, meanwhile, you're elevating him with that left butterfly. As soon as you push it into his stomach, you're going to see it when you're on top. It doesn't feel good. You feel helpless. All right? So, and, and it comes up in different situations, too. It could come up in this situation where I'm here, and I'm playing, trying to play meat hook here, and he's trying to stuff this knee in right there. In this situation, I'm trying to play rubber guard. I could abandon. Grab his wrist, it's already down there. Put that butterfly in. <laughs> so, it comes up in different situations. He put his wrist there. That's a great place to trap his wrist. Or any time it's around his hip. I'm working rubber guard here and he's trying, to, he's, trying to push, he's trying to push this down. I can force rubber guard still. I can, I can do this. Or I can, you know what, I'm gonna keep that there. And we're gone. Anytime he's just right there, you can pin it, put that butterfly. That's why it's important to have sticky butterflies, dexterous butterflies, killer butterflies. Because right there, I was thinking rubber cop, and I'm like, let's go back to butterfly. You got your butterfly, got to go in there. It's got to be smooth. It's basic Jean Jacques Machado 101. That's all that is. He's the master of this. This is all Jean Jacques. Overhook, butterflies. Where's that wrist? That's all he does. And for those of you who don't know my master, Jean Jacques Machado, he has no fingers on his left hand. That's why his overhook is the best in all of jiu-jitsu. No one's even close to his overhook because he doesn't have any fingers. Every, if, he, if he had fingers, he'd be grabbing the gi just like everyone else, not developing any kind of overhooks or any kind of upper body clinch. But since he didn't have any fingers, he couldn't grab dude's right sleeve. He had to overhook everything. And then, you know, over the years, he developed an Olympic wrestling overhook. That's why in Abu Dhabi, when everybody was trying to figure out what to do with this no gi game, we had all these legends in jiu-jitsu. They, they, they went to Abu Dhabi, and they were masters of passing the guard and finishing, but they, couldn't, they didn't know what to do without the handles. And they were going against wrestlers who were masters at controlling bodies without ropes. But they didn't know how to pass the guard. They didn't know how to finish. So it's just like these epic battles, nothing going on. There were some cool matches in early Abu Dhabi, but generally, that's just sleeping pill right there. You can <laughs> sleep trying to watch Abu Dhabi. <clears throat> what matches this? And then John Jock came along and just crushed everybody. First year, just finished everybody. It was like, and everyone's like, oh, John Jock Machado. Like Mario Sperry and Bustamante were like, John Jock, John Jock, John Jock, John Jock, John Jock. He was just the, the god of Abu Dhabi. And, and why was it? It was the overhook. He was ready for it. It didn't matter, no gi or gi for him. It was still, it was, still, it was, it was uh, harder to hold that overhook. <clears throat> No gi. Dudes are still slipping out, but he, you slip out, he goes right back to it. And it only needs a second or two to make something happen. Watch, the, watch uh, Jean Jacques' fights in Abu Dhabi. Pay attention to his left arm. That's why he dominated. Just went right through everybody. That overhook. He was ready for it. That's why it's important to develop an overhook, especially if you love the no gi game. And obviously you do because you're here. You develop an overhook, you're developing upper body clinches. 
That means you're taking your opponent out of the mix for as long as you have the clinch. Does that make sense? That's right. Most, most top jiu-jitsu players don't have that Jean-Jacques over. They don't. <clears throat> They're like, fuck the upper body clinch. We're going to go after the legs. And now you see all the top guys, they're just going spiral de la Hiva. That's all they're doing underneath. And that translates no gi. It really does. It translates beautifully. That's the best part of the gi game. It translates to no gi. Because all that pant grabbing does translate when you could hook ankles. You hook ankles, it works just as well. That's why all the top guys in Abu Dhabi, they're all playing spiral, they're all playing de la Hiva, and it works gi no gi. So there's no need for them to develop an upper body clench and an overhook game and an underhook game. They're like, forget about that. We're just gonna start play play tug of war with the pants and it will translate to no gi. All right, that's another game. That, that, if, if you wanna play gi and no gi, and you wanna, you wanna that's a, a good game. Watch Mendez, watch Cobrina. That's a good game because it will translate no gi. It will. MMA, you're gonna get pounded on, but if you're not gonna do MMA, it doesn't really matter. Does that make sense? The overhook game, you're not going to get pounded on. You got an overhook, that's your game, no key, grabbing overhooks so and just hunting for overhooks, going, you're constantly taking the guy out of his punching ability. So it's up to you. For me, I like, I like grappling and pretending there's punches. It makes me feel good. Like, I feel, I'm like obsessed with it. And I'll feel insecure if like a dude can just rain down punches on me. That's my game. You know, I, I like going after overhooks, going after upper body clenches, double underhooks. Whether there's punches or not, it just makes me feel better. And it's, you know, it's, I train a lot of MMA fighters, so it's in my best interest to really get good at that game, to teach these guys that are trying to get in the UFC. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now, we're going we're gonna to still continue with the sweep we're doing, but we're going to mix it in with the stick shift. Sweep's going to work, and then the next one's not going to work, we slide from the tricep down to the wrist, pop, pop, and keep that butterfly going. Okay? Still end up in three-quarter mount. All right? Let's go.